Welcome to the Off Pitch Podcast, where we show you the alternative sides of football by sharing stories and skills from all players of the pitch. Hey guys, so welcome to this podcast. Uh, we're here to, with Tobias today on the Fagel Brothers podcast. Um, so yeah, how are you Tobias? Everything is going well, yeah. Sitting here <laughs> with you guys, excited to hear w what questions you have for me. Yeah. yeah, so we have been watching you in your journey to making for freestyle and now the Off Pitch Academy. Um, so, yeah, great. <laughs> 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 okay, so w we are started, we, we actually did record this uh, a couple of days ago. But uh, because the sound was not that good on my microphone, we had to buy a new one. So now we are doing another round. And um, I'm here with the uh, Fagerli brothers, Fagli brothers, uh, Allen and Brinjar. And we are at Super Bowl, so there's freestylers around. We thought it would be cool to have some freestyle in the background. And um, yeah, the topic of this podcast is... Um, a little, we, we want to get to know a little bit more about how you guys train and prepare for competitions like Super Bowl. So maybe you guys can start off with uh, telling us a little bit about how you guys got started with freestyle first and how you st your training was in the beginning. Yeah, so we started in back in 2009, which is 12 years ago, and uh, we started the exact same day. Uh, the sa exact same day sorry. Uh, in May 2009. Uh, you know the day as well? Yeah, we were watch watching on YouTube and uh, uh, it was especially the video of Toz Tozani uh, which inspired us in the beginning and uh, we started the exact day. day and uh, <laughs> but but <laughs> what, 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 what date? Do you know the date? Like no, not the exact date, but I, we but know it was, it, in was in, it was in May 2009. And uh, we got so inspired and the first year was basically just passion dr w that was driving us and uh, we just trained basically all day, especially in the summer. Uh, so we had a lot of training hours during the first year and we did some big steps during that year, of course. And the main focus in the beginning it was lowers uh, and after a while we, we decided to go more and train sit downs and also uppers. Uh, so training that early on, uh, I think, helped us to to be able to push the level in all round later. So okay, th that's good. Good to know. And also, like like you said, in the beginning, there's it's uh, uh, it's normal to just you, you always start off with the basics, and then you know you don't really have any specific style in a way. But then you kind of start to shape your style. And do you guys remember when that shift happened, or when you guys felt like you had? Uh, developed kind of more your own personal style yeah well it's a gradual process of course but uh, i think pretty early on we went uh, our different ways especially for me i i started doing new shit pretty early and uh, was really eager to push in like uh, in the direction of a bit of an original style i trained a lot of 360 atvs in the beginning and new shit and stuff like that and uh Alan was maybe more into classical lowers, which is the case today too. So um, we went a bit different directions in the beginning, but also we trained a lot of the same tricks because we we had to have some kind of base uh, and learn the basic stuff bec before we could really take uh, our own path and uh, uh, create something truly original. Yeah, and I would say for me it's... Uh Maybe in 2015, uh, like that late, I felt like I started to get uh, like completely my own style. Maybe 2014, some people would say as well, but uh, at least uh, 2015, which is uh, six years after I started, I felt like uh, uh, I had like my uh, my own style. So uh, yeah, it takes time. Yeah, it definitely does. And okay, so like, let's get more into into that. So around 2014 15 when you guys felt that you were yeah maybe developing more and more your own style and got more recognition for it probably just not just in competitions but in the community what changed and we talked about this earlier but how did you start uh change up your trainings and uh you know yeah you guys were motivated to then win competitions and yeah tell us a little bit more about how you guys changed during the, that time 
Yeah, because uh, the first five years <coughs> we were uh, doing it just for a hobby, hobby and uh, for good training, just uh, exercise. Uh, but after uh, 2013, uh, we where we did actually pretty well in Super Bowl, I managed to come top 32 and Brynjar uh, top eight, which was for us really surprising. And uh, we also uh, that year read a book, which is. Uh, in English called Become the Best uh, by Erik Bertland Larsen. So it was, I would say, in the start of 2014, we decided to try to go all in on freestyle and see how good we can become because we, we really felt the potential. And uh, yeah, what changed, uh, I think the most important part is just we put more time into it more training time and more uh, time thinking about it so and also probably the mindset that you now were more targeted towards actually winning competitions right yes definitely so uh, just uh, thinking about more how we can optimize uh, our trainings uh, for uh, for our general general level to increase but also specifically for competitions as well yeah, because like in, I remember uh, very much like in 2015, we were in the European Champs and uh, we really noticed how some players could do very well by having just their own type of tricks and having a really clean execution on it. And uh, from then, we decided to go really into trying to develop uh, our own style and some new tricks because we knew that that would really give us an edge on the other competitors. I think it was actually Sven that inspired us very much that year to because he did so unexpectedly good in that competition. He 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 won against you, didn't you? Yeah, and and that really sparked something in us. It's like we can create new stuff and get consistent at it. And uh, so that winter we really tried to push that hard. And uh, when the summer came in 2016, I think we did some really big steps. And uh, that was also the first time I managed to beat you, to be honest, <laughs> if you remember. Uh, so that, uh, <laughs> that winter, really, uh, we did some big steps then, then in, like, in the overall difficulty and creating new, new stuff as well. Yeah, I think that's really a valuable point. And, and just like you said, like, I also remember I also I saw that, for example, you know, even Sean and other freestylers that had their own style, and there's been a lot of you know people or freestylers complaining that oh he's not doing that you know difficult tricks and only focus on the difficulty mm -hmm. uh, of the specific trick and you know how you perform it, but they don't take into consideration that they have maybe uh, come up with their own tricks or style or put their own flavor to something, and mm -hmm. that's something you definitely see in in you guys and you see that uh, that change from just performing the tricks to actually uh, you know doing them more in your own way or adding something to it which you know makes a crowd and uh, the judges also react in a different way um, okay so that, that's a really valuable th tips and I think a lot of you guys can take with you and and also then in regards of the, the training like how how do you let's say now how do you structure your trainings and how is a normal training day for you guys well, we usually train twice every day, uh, or like twice a day, six days a week, because we usually have one day of rest per week. Uh, so uh, a typical day, we train like from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. or something. And then we have a second session in the evening, maybe from like 6 p.m. to, to 7.30 p.m. So like three hours at training per day, six days a week, 18 hours per week. Uh, and if we do that uh, for like every week in like uh, for many years, that is uh, the most important thing for us to develop uh, uh, a good level. So ne never skip a training. Uh, well, that's the base rule uh, at least. So we, if we really feel bad a day or we get sick or anything like that, then we don't we don't train obviously. But but and and then also taking into consideration that that's of course quality training because 
like we spoke about the last time when we recorded this, um, I mm. um, I remember I, I was also very focused on getting the hours in, yeah. but I might not have been that focused on actually creating quality every training. Mm. Uh, of course, that was my goal, but in many cases I didn't, and I felt like, oh, I just have to put in the work and the hours, and I didn't really you know, manage to uh, to train with quality, uh, I feel. But, mm. of course, that's that's very important. So, you know, uh, like you said, uh, of course, you need to put in the hours, but you guys also focus on getting that quality. And how do you actually do that? Well, it's uh, really reflecting up upon our own training and the freestyle uh, well, while we're not, we're not training. That helps a lot. So we try to think about what... Uh, level of intensity in the training is optimal because if you train so much we can't really train that much intensely because then our bodies will just get fatigued so we have uh, over the years we have uh, really taken the incent intensity a bit down so we can keep our bodies in a flow state more of the time and also just trying to put allocate some time before the session to think about new tricks and uh, opening the mind to new ideas uh, that has also been a major uh, uh, key for us to develop new tricks and a new style do you have anything to add Arlen? yeah i think uh, brunner is maybe a bit more strict uh, about getting just the time in uh, i feel more that uh, if i feel uh, bad and uh, i don't uh, have a good quality on the training I often just try to okay focus maximum for 10 minutes and try to do my best and uh, then it often can work and I will continue and finish my training but uh, if then it doesn't work uh, I usually just uh, yeah either take it easy and just uh, practice some uh, non high intensity moves or just stop my training because uh, there's always a tomorrow and uh, it could uh, often be smart to, when we are practicing and training that much, it could uh, often be wise to uh, stop a training if you feel bad. So uh, for me, uh, maybe the most important part is just to be mindful and aware of what, what state your body is in and uh, just think about, okay, how can I become a better freestyler? and uh, think that in a long perspective and not just on that training session. I also really like the approach you have when, when you said that you're you know trying a trick for, was it five or 10 minutes you said? Just yeah. trying and failing and failing or just at least repeat it a lot. And um, um, yeah, I just listened to a podcast of Andrew Huberman who also said the same that just like, okay, you said, Brinjar, about getting into the flow state, that might be good, especially when it's, you know, things that you already know, but to actually learn something, it's actually better to fail many times because, because that's the only way the body can actually adapt and become better. So that's a good approach, especially if you have a bad session to just think about one trick or one combination or something that you want to have done and then, you know, really get deep into that and fail a, um, a lot of times. Yeah, exactly. And uh, for us uh, in the winter period, uh, over the years, we usually drop a lot in that period because uh, then it's uh, like training time where we can uh, develop new moves. And uh, I remember for myself this winter as well, I it was a lot more failing than uh, doing tricks, I would say. But uh, and I don't think people realize that because when they see you on stage mm -hmm. or uh, when you're training, it doesn't seem like you can drop the ball. Yeah, but of course I can. But it's it's just because I've been working on it for such a long time. So uh, because uh, every new trick you have to walk, f like get from uh, first doing it and then more understanding what you need to focus on on the trick and then practice on what you what you are focusing on and then gradually you can become consistent on the move itself and then gradually you you can implement it into your uh, flow so it's it's a long process Th that's an interesting way uh, in looking at it is it also so that you then um whenever you are practicing a trick you actually also look into where you are now with that trick are you at the beginning just learning it are you getting consistent am i like do you look at it in phases 
Um, yeah, mentally I think I do, but uh, I don't uh, have like a map of it. So I just... Uh, we should create that map because I think <laughs> that was a really good way of looking at it. Yeah, I think it's useful for uh, a lot of tricks. And uh, yeah, one method of uh, making this process go faster is, as you said, just, uh, for example, put five minutes of a session and only focus on that and just put your training sessions into different categories because if you always just train flow then you can after a session be happy with your session but you don't really maybe remember what you learned or if you even learned anything new yeah you, you should probably embrace that you do lose the ball a lot because that's the the time you actually do um uh, learn the most but also mm. getting back into uh, uh, you guys starting the session when you guys start the session uh, because many people and in many sports you have a plan for your session and you know that this is what I'm going to train today but I think y you guys think a little bit different so how do you approach that? Yeah well we usually like I said we have uh, we used to take like 10 minutes before we start the warm up to just think outside the box and uh, open the mind to new ideas so we just to take the body in different positions and think maybe you could do the trick like this or like that. Uh, so that helps. And then we do a warm up, uh, which is usually like a um, light jog and some some dynamic stretching. Uh, and then we just do uh, some tricks, uh, which starts with low intensity and uh, and then we gradually increase. Um, but is, is it during the warm up that you actually know what kind of tricks that you feel good on uh, on that day or yeah well uh, we usually have like a maximum one hour of lowers every day and if we do it on the first or second session that varies on how we feel so we very much just train uh, what we feel the body is um, uh, prepared to or what the body most optimal I can't uh, pronounce yeah. it, but I, I think you know what I mean. Yeah, so I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah, so what feels right, uh, we will train. So we follow uh, like a uh, intuition of it, I think. Um, so if we feel like uh, the handstand is very good, then we train a lot of Jordan stall. So and yeah, I yeah, think so you know. Yeah, no, I, mean. I think uh, <laughs> a lot of you guys also should take this into consideration. Maybe not be too strict with uh, today. I'm going to train this get to feel your body and what feels right that day the same for me sometimes i can feel really good in lowers and i was wanting to just do acrobatic moves and then the opposite um but but also okay before we end i also want to talk to you guys about battles and you know i spoke also to spinny vini about um battling or at least you know preparing for the moments that you are actually training for and it seems like you guys are, you know, pretty good at actually training battles and getting that in, so you're comfortable in that state. Mm. And when you enter this the stage, it's not like you have been training just lowers or anything. You have actually trained for this moment. Yeah, that's a very important aspect to our preparations for competitions. Definitely, we uh, when the competitions are uh, coming up, we have a lot of uh, sessions where we battle each other. We put on some uh, previous battles on the speakers, and then we can really hear the crowd. Then we can hear like Lorenzo or any other uh, MC that is talking, and we can we will try to feel uh, that we are on the stage and battling it out. So we try to make it at make it as realistic as possible, uh, and uh, that makes us more comfortable on stage. Even though it's really hard to make it as realistic as that, it still helps. Yeah, it's a very um, important point too that to remember that uh, every competition feels different. So you you can have so much experience as you want, but uh, yeah, we both have so much uh, experience now over the years because we have been competing for ten years or so. But uh, like again, this year's Super Bowl, it feels different. We have uh, new tricks and. Uh, kind of a new setting and audience i would say uh, with the corona situation and everything so uh, we prepare as well as we can but we also always just have to take the day uh, and the audience and your shape as it is on that day okay yes yeah, so, so you don't 
Yeah, so you also try to create some kind of a fresh start, so you don't really start up with like, oh, last time I won, or you know, y like you said, you try to just this is a completely different setting. It doesn't matter if I won or if I did this, or you know, this is a new day, and yeah, that, that's a really good. Yeah, point. you just have to have to do. Yeah, ha you can have expectations, but uh, it is the way it is, anyways, and. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's not much that you can 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 do about it. But okay, so so uh, in regards of the training again, how often do you actually train battles against each other? Mm, in the winter period, as we were talking about, it's very rare. It's uh, this winter. I think we didn't do it for many months. But uh, now the last two months, one two months, I think maybe one session a week, something like that or one to two sessions a week and then when you do that once uh, let's say it's you have a battle training is it just a few battles during that uh, session or is it the h entire session is about just battling uh it's often maybe uh, yeah one hour so maybe six battles or something okay and then that's all you do for that session uh no we often just uh, if we feel good and warm we can just train train some more after as well but of course that will be lower intensity because training battles is uh, is tiring yeah no it definitely is i think we we shouldn't keep on for way too long but if you guys that are watching this or listening to this uh, want to hear more from ireland and brinjar let us know and also let us know what you would like to hear more of we have touched the surface at least of how they train and how they prepare for battles which is uh really appreciate it and i think a lot of you guys have got some knowledge out of this so thank you so much guys for joining the podcast and uh, for you guys listening you can um, check out their instagram via the link in the bio on youtube or via the show notes in the podcast and don't forget to track your sessions and share them at off pitch to learn from your own sessions and also from others do you have anything to add Alan? it was a pleasure <laughs> yeah, That's it's a good app as well. I just uh, started using it today. So check it out and uh, yeah, see you guys in the next podcast. See ya. See you.